Hi, Presby family. I want to wish you all a great afternoon. I want to share with you some words from the Apostle Paul. This is Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 5. Paul says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. And then he says, Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. And then Paul goes on to talk about how different members of the body of Christ have different gifts, and each of those gifts is used to help the body as a whole. And this is very similar to what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where he also talks about the body of Christ, and he points out that one member of a body can't say to another member, sorry, I don't need you, I'm going to go it alone. And so this teaching on the body of Christ is integral to how we as Christians understand our role in the world. I want to draw a couple observations from this. First, this, this teaching of the body of Christ and how we are not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought reminds us to be attentive to the needs of other members of the body of Christ. It reminds us of the diversity of the body of Christ, that the body of Christ contains so many wondrous different individuals in its membership. And so when we consider things that are happening around us in our culture at this time, I invite you and encourage you to keep praying for, for justice and for the recognition that we are all equal in God's eyes, that every person has dignity and worth, and that God uses us all because we all have value and we all have something to offer. The body of Christ is so much more vast, more diverse, and more beautiful than we often are inclined to think. The second observation I want to draw from this passage has to do with things going on right now within our own congregation. The COVID-19 pandemic has presented some unique challenges and I've been able to see how these challenges highlight the fact that within the body of Christ, we all have something different to offer. A lot of these things have been happening behind the scenes. You may not be aware of all of the work that different people are, are putting in for the sake of our church family, but I want to highlight to you some of the things that are going on right now. Throughout the pandemic, I've been regularly meeting with a group within our church called the Emergency Medical Response Team. And these are a group of individuals who serve in various capacities within the uh, healthcare field or crisis response scenarios. And they've been a regular advisory board to me and to the church elders as they are equipped with medical expertise and the capacity to offer counsel based on the latest updates we hear about the pandemic. I also want to highlight the diversity that we have within our staff in terms of the rich array of gifts represented. You've been able to see firsthand for yourselves how so many of our staff members have been creative and creating video updates and ways of doing church events, drive-throughs, and, and other new techniques and strategies for bringing the ministry of the church to you in a socially distant fashion. You've also seen how many of our elders and other church leaders have implemented the shepherding care groups and how so many people are using their gifts and abilities to serve others that way. And I can go on and on talking about the ways that I, as a pastor in this church, have been blessed to see individuals partnering together, using their gifts, addressing the challenges of this season. Right now, many of these groups are, are pooling their expertise and their abilities in order to assess the topic of beginning to gather again on Sunday mornings. I continue to meet with representatives from the emergency medical response team and, and with key staff members who serve in different areas and who understand the nuts and bolts of the ministries of this church in unique and intimate ways. And I continue to be collaborating with, with elders who are weighing the expertise of these individuals and listening to their proposals and recommendations. You haven't heard a lot of specifics from us yet about when we will be reopening the doors on Sunday mornings, but I want to let you know that 
These are active conversations that I'm having with people each and every day. Leaders within your church are working hard and working tirelessly for the sake of this church family. And we're excited for the day when we will be able to gather together again. While that day hasn't come yet, we're looking forward with anticipation as Indiana will hopefully, Lord willing, soon be entering into stage four of the Back on Track Indiana plan. We are looking at the weeks ahead of us and we are listening to the latest recommendations from our medical experts. And once decisions are made about where, when, and how we'll be gathering together again, we'll be excited to communicate those things to you. But in the meantime, I want to thank you so much for the, the grace and the flexibility that you all have demonstrated. I want to thank you all for the ways that you have been the body of Christ during this time. And I want to encourage you to continue to faithfully serve Christ and worship him in the ways that you are. Just because we're not together doesn't mean that we're not united. And it doesn't mean that we're not one body. So friends, be the body of Christ this week. Put your gifts, talents, passions, and abilities to use to glorify God, to enjoy him, and to bring joy to our city and to our world.